today I want to talk about how we can test Laravel middleware. And I've done this a bunch of different ways over the years. And uh, the approach I'm going to show today is, is the one I've landed on that I think kind of strikes the right balance. So the first thing to think about with the middleware, there's a few different ways you can test it, right? So let's, let's take this example middleware. Very simple example just for purposes of this demonstration. It's called requires a require paid subscription. And all it's looking at is like the user's logged in and they're subscribed, whatever that means. We're not even going to get into the logic behind that, but that's, that's the key thing this doing is doing. And is if they are subscribed, they keep going. If they're not subscribed, they get redirected back to a specific route with a specific message. All right. So just keep that in your mind. How could we test this? Now, one way we could test it is sort of like the more unit test approach. And I'm using these terms unit feature loosely, but more just trying to test this class in isolation, right? Like I'm, I'm going to new up the class. I'm going to pass in a request and a closure, and then I'm going to get something back. You can do that. That absolutely works. I don't like that style of testing in Laravel because to me, the middleware is about more than just the logic. It's like it's wired up in a certain way and it maybe it comes before this other middleware and after that other one. So there's like all this context in a real world app that you lose if you try to purely test this as a unit test. So I, I don't like that approach. You might. And if that works for you, great. Uh, another approach is to test this as a feature test, right? So there's got to be some routes in your project that are using this middleware. And in the feature test for those routes, you could just add on and test the middleware as part of it. That is okay. And that's actually what I had done for quite a while where it breaks down a little bit in a few, in a few places. So first of all, routes change. Um, sometimes a route might move out from a middleware and now it's like, I got to restructure my tests. That's not the worst thing, but it's, it's a little brittle. I don't love it for that reason. Second of all, I'm already testing things in my feature test. Like this feels a little bolted on. It's passable, but in this particular instance, this is a very simple piece of middleware. What if it was a little more complex? What if there's a couple paths through the middleware? And now what if my feature test, the route that this middleware is attached to, has like all sorts of setup I need to do to even get to let the middleware execute? So it, it's a little messy. It's a little brittle. It works. It's okay. I did it for many years, but it's not perfect. So instead, I want to show an alternate approach. Let's look at this. So first of all, I'm just going to point out, we call this an integration test. And I'm not going to get into the weeds on this. If you want to learn more, go to Mastering Laravel. We have all sorts of testing materials where we talk about this in more detail. But this is sort of positioned between, in my mind at least, between that pure unit test and like a more full featured feature test. Um, so just conceptually, that's where it sits. But what we're doing is we're hitting this route. Now, right away, I don't know if you're like me, I see this in a test, I immediately don't like it. Like, why are you hitting a URL and not hitting a named route? Like, I, I like using named routes. Again, that's an opinion. Maybe you don't like hitting named routes for whatever reason. But for me, I always hit a named route. The reason is I want to test this kind of in isolation from the actual routing layer of my app. And so in the setup for this test suite, I'm essentially dynamically registering a dummy route, right? So that I have to give it a URL. And because of the way Laravel routing works, I can't actually dynamically register a named route in here. I tried, um, it does not work. And it's probably not worth the effort to even try to figure it out because it gets into like the inner workings of how those named routes are built. When this all happens in the life cycle of a test request. Anyways, it's kind of outside the scope of what I want to talk about here, but this is why I'm doing that. So it's just a simple closure based route. I'm just returning some dummy content and then I'm chaining on my middleware, right? So require paid subscription. Um, so that on every test, it's going to basically create this fake route, attach the middleware to it. And now my test can call that fake route. And all it has to focus on is the middleware logic, right? So unlike a normal feature test where I have like other things happening in the, um, the, con the controller that the feature is part of, I don't have to worry about that here. So let's just look at this. So I'm in, this is the happy path, right? 
subscribed user gets in, the middleware is not blocking them. All I can see, I'm creating a user and I'm using some factory named states to just sort of like abstract away what it means to be subscribed. I'm saying they have an active subscription. I'm acting as that user. I'm getting that dummy route. I'm getting an okay. And I'm getting that, that content that's in here. So if I run this, it passes. Great. The other scenario works equally well. So redirecting somebody that's not subscribed. Again, I use a, a factory state on the user factory to say they, they have a, a subscription, but it's expired, right? And, and maybe I could create another state for they've never subscribed. Anyways, but I'm covering this, this path. Now I'm asserting not okay. It's redirected back to my named route with this message. Cause remember in my middleware, those are the two things that were happening. So I'm, I'm effectively covering both sides of that if statement and I'm asserting what's happening within the if statement if you're getting bounced out because of the middleware. Now there is one sneaky little third state that you'd have to notice this question mark uh, to recognize, which is like, what if I'm not logged in at all? So there is no user on the request. In that case, we should also get bounced. And that's what this final test looks at, right? So I'm not creating a user. I'm not acting as that user. I'm just calling this um, dummy route and I'm seeing the same behavior. So this is a nice approach. Um, and I wanted to just walk you through it. Maybe you can find it useful in your apps. And I hope you're writing lots of Laravel tests. If not, head over to masteringlaravel.io, sign up for our free newsletter, and we send lots of testing tips. So I think you'll find that useful too.